Good afternoon, Cedar Park Chamber of Commerce. This is Aaron Cox with the Texas Association of Business, and I am excited to be with you today. I uh, thank you for having me for your monthly luncheon. And I know this is a little bit different than what we expected, but we are going to go with it. I know I fully expected to be there breaking bread with you all in the friendly confines of Hill Country Bible Church, but there was a different plan for today. And so we're gonna hop into the plan, we're going to adjust, and we're gonna move forward. Uh, at the end of the day though, I still hope that there are a few nuggets that you can take away for your business, um, that there are some words of encouragement that you hear that will allow you to go back out and passionately pursue the things that you do each day. I have to admit to you, as I thought about this, I, I kind of struggled with what to talk about. Um, usually it's a, you know, a message of an update from the Capitol or you know, something relative or relevant that's going on in business. But today is a little bit different. It, it's a little bit unique. Uh, it feels like the rules have changed a little bit. And so we have to move and adjust to those uh, in this world that is being disrupted and, and is a little, you know, we're experiencing some disruption. As I mentioned, I work for the Texas Association of Business. And so for those who do not know, the Texas Association of Business is your state chamber of commerce. Uh, we are here each day advocating on behalf of business to create a regulatory and policy framework that allows you to do the things that you do each day and that you do so well. Uh, we function within our mission really on three core principles, three pillars, if you will, that allow us to do what we do. And those are to engage, to advocate, and to compete. When we look at engagement, we want to engage with our elected officials, with state agency professionals, with our federal legislators, and within the courts to know the people um, and to know the issues that are going to impact business. And then we take that information and we advocate. We speak on behalf of business here at the Capitol in Austin that you see behind me, uh, in Washington, D.C., and in the court system, if necessary, to make sure that there is a, a regulatory framework that you can do your business well within. And we take all of those, we boil them up so that you are competitive. We want your business, we want every business in Texas, every community in Texas to compete. We want to be the most competitive. And when we can create that framework, that makes our state the most competitive place in the world to do business and I think that we've done a good job, or at least you all have executed well, because we still remain the best place in the world to live and to do business. And so thank you for that. And we are excited to get to do that work. In a time like this, what those mean is that we have to bring resources. We have to be an information source. And so we've created some resources that uh, we are sharing with our local chamber partners and we're gathering information from our chamber partners so that we can make sure that our business community is well taken care of. If you'll visit txbiz.org slash corona, um, you'll find that resource center and it's filled with categorized listings of information, um, of resources to connect you if you need to borrow money or to do uh, one of the grants that are included in the stimulus. Um, there are also communication tools for you to use internally uh, within your business that will help you um, weather this storm. And so we, we are excited to provide that and we are excited to do the work. Over the last couple of weeks, you know that there have been lots of conversations uh, surrounding business and surrounding the impact of this pandemic on business. And we want you to know that we have been at the heart of those conversations. We've been right in the middle of them advocating on your behalf, making sure that the resources and the response that business needs um, is coming as quickly as possible, and that we can connect you with those to make sure that as we go through this, again, we come out on the other side of this better and stronger. And so we, we look forward to doing it, and it's our pleasure to serve in that way. The reality though of today is that as we look at, at this moment, as we look ahead for a week, um, our times are a bit uncertain. Um, our, our routines have been disrupted, our routines have been interrupted, and, and we are living in kind of a, a new reality. I don't wanna call it a new reality because that means it's gonna stick around for a long time, so I'll call it a different reality that, that we are living in 
um, that's proven a few things. One, that we are still resilient, that we can make it through. It also proves to me that I made the right career choice when I decided not to be a school teacher because I have children at home today that are doing work and I am having to play the role of teacher. And that is not fun. So thank you to our teacher heroes that are out there. We appreciate the work that you do. We don't always say it, we don't always show it, but my goodness, you guys are my hero if nobody else's. And thank you, thank you so much for what you do. But as I mentioned, you know, this is a different, different time. And I think we as leaders, you as leaders, those sitting in this room, you are the folks in the community that everybody is looking to for leadership and for guidance. And in many ways, you are the barometer that people are going to gauge things by to know what to do next, what, what's coming, how do we get there, where are we going, you know, will this ever end? And, and I, I encourage you today to, to really choose peace over panic. I know that there's a lot of reasons to, to be nervous and, and there are a lot of reasons and we see a lot of the hysteria around us, but I wanna encourage you again to choose peace over panic. And I hope today that in the next few minutes, we can share a, a few words that will be, at least be a tool maybe um, for us to choose peace over panic and to move our communities forward to the other side of where we want to be. As I talk about this, I know that there's a lot of anxiety. There are a lot of people that are very anxious and there are a lot of folks who don't know what's next. So in this moment, as leaders, as folks in your community that people are looking to, I encourage you to be calm. Just be calm. As we, we talk about where we focus our energy, where we focus our, our efforts, and, and, and as we choose peace, I want us to fix our minds and remain C-A-L-M, calm. The C, if we look at it and we kind of break that word down, the C stands for celebrate. We want to set our minds to celebrate the good in our community, to celebrate the things that we know are great about where we live and to celebrate the beauty that is all around us. Celebrate our families, those folks that we don't get an opportunity to spend as much time with that we want sometimes and that often we lament that we are not getting that quality time. Here's your quality time. It's here. So let's celebrate that. And let's connect in new ways. Let's reestablish those relationships and make them stronger, make them more able to weather the things that are at hand. We wanna make sure that, that we are celebrating our businesses and celebrating those that are serving in our businesses so that as we weather this storm and we look at for economic downturns and you know great booms, we remain constant because we are calm and we are celebrating those things um, that are everyday blessings in our world around us. Take a moment and celebrate those. Next, we want to act. You know, nothing really happens without action. And so let's be proactive in the things that we do. Let's take a look at those things that we've been getting around to and get to some of them. I know that each one of us has some of those, whether it's in our personal lives or in our professional lives. I know that there are some things that we can act on while we have this extra time. Generally, our days are filled from sunup to sundown work and then run, run, run after that. But now is a moment where we get to be still and we can act on some of those things we've been looking to do. Let, let's tend to the parts of our lives and of our businesses that, that need some tending. Let's start creating a plan for the future that we desire, for the future that will be and the future that we will have if we act today. Let's start acting. I also want us in that acting to take action. Let's look around our community and see, is there an older person in our neighborhood that may need something from the grocery the next time that we go? Let's help them out. Is there, is there someone who just needs you to swing by because they live alone and say hello? Let's act. Let's be that great community. Let's be those leaders that shows the rest of us that through this all, we're in it together and we will come out on the other side victorious. Third, I want us to look at the L and let's listen. Let's listen to the sounds around us. Um, let's listen to the good 
that's going on around us. Let's listen to the good that will be, the good that is coming. There's a ton of negative information coming in uh, to, to us from a variety of areas right now, but let's listen to the good. I also want to encourage everybody to, let's listen to a little bit to our own advice. There have been some things that we've been telling ourselves that we want to work on, that we want to do, um, that we need to do. Let, let's listen to our own advice. Let's take our own advice for a little bit and let's, let's listen to some of that and act on it. And then finally, let's listen to that little voice inside and, and, and recognize right now, you know, is, there, is this the time to, to do something a little bit different? In whatever aspect, whether it's business or personal, wherever it is in life, is this time for us to do something a little bit different? Is this time for us to pursue a different path? Is this time for us to write a new plan? Because we have been disrupted. Things have been turned upside down. And so we have to understand that there's going to be a different reality going forward. There's going to be something a little bit different about the way that we go forward on the other side of this. So is this time to listen and act on writing that new plan on how it's going to be. What do we need to change to be successful? And then finally, I want us to meditate. I want us to take all of that stuff in. I want us to sort it out and spend some time just being quiet. Life is hectic. Um, life has been hectic. And I, I think once we're past this initial scramble of getting used to, to what is the new normal for a little while, um, we need to stop for a moment and reflect. We need to, to take a minute to, to reconnect and to focus, to focus ourselves, um, to focus our families and our businesses, to make sure that we are heading on the path that is best for us. We need to meditate and consider what things look like on the other side of this, because through that, much of the reality that we wish for or that we want can be created and we can pursue it when this is all over. Think about those things. How am I going to position my business? How will I position my brand? How am I gonna position my organization to be the best they can be after this? As important though, let's get alone and take care of yourselves. Take some time to clear your mind and to relax. Consider where you are in pursuit of your goals. Reflect on those and, and maybe adjust them or start running after them. Are there things that you want to change? Are there things that you want to be better? Are there things you want to be different? I think those can come through that meditation and that time of quiet. Most importantly, I think some of the answers in that quiet, you're able to think. We're able to just think. So you can consider how can those things be achieved? How do I make those things happen? And I hope that you are able to spend a few moments doing that. I can tell you that in my calm and, and in my meditation, uh, a big part of that or uh, a part of that is in full disclosure, I will choose to pray. In my time of meditation, I, I'm going to, to make it a point to, to pray for the health and for the safety of each of you and your families. <clears throat> I'm gonna be praying for your businesses and, and hoping that as we go through this and as we get to the other side, that they are truly better, that they are truly stronger, and that you are able to do the things that you have dreamed of, many of you for your entire lives going forward. I'm gonna pray that we rise up and be better leaders in our communities and in our organizations and in, in every aspect of our lives that we are able to lead more effectively, that we have overcome adversity. And so now we will be better. We've learned the lessons and that we will be better. And I'm also going to, to pray for our great state and for our nation. Cedar Park, I know this is a weird wonky kind of business luncheon message, but I'm going to say it. I love you guys. I appreciate the community that you all have built there. I, I appreciate the community that you all allow us to, to live in and to work in daily. And I thank you again for all of your efforts. I again wish that I could be there with you, but I look forward to the next time that we are together. And until then, let's build it back. Let's bounce back better. Let's continue moving forward. 
Let's stay calm. Let's celebrate. Let's act. Let's listen. And let's meditate a little bit so that when this is all over, we bounce back stronger, better. And Cedar Park is, again, the greatest place on earth to live. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to the next time, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.